It's the only wrestling podcast on earth with one Canadian destroyer, Petey Williams. How's she going, eh? One of my favorite people of all time, Lars Fredrickson from Rancid. How are y'all doing? Now, Dimitri Young may pop in in a little bit, and if he does, we're going to pretend he's been here all show long, so just play along with it like we are here. But guys, I am super excited to sit down and interview this guy. Pete, you're the one that set this up, and I, I'm going to throw it to you, let you introduce, because this podcast is about to get a little bit pure, but P.D. Williams, why don't you go ahead and introduce this week's guest because i'm really excited about this my friend well i mean you know his name is jonathan gresham but let me tell you this uh this guy's been around for well not forever but you know he started wrestling at 16 years old which i mean we'll talk about that i know i wasn't even allowed to step foot in the ring at, at that young of age a current ring of honor pure champion brought the belt back from uh, its hiatus so jonathan thank you so much for being here how you doing man I'm great, guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, there's Dimitri slipping into the podcast. John, I want to start the questioning here because I would say I saw a promo of yours about seven months ago. It might be four months ago where you were talking about bringing back the pure belt. And you, you kind of referenced Daniel Bryan or Bryanson, depending on where you remember him from. Growing up. And getting into the industry, was this the path you wanted to go as a wrestler, this pure wrestling, or was it just something you fell into? Because, you know, we all have this pomp and circumstance in our head where we want to be flashy and be like the macho man and do the flying elbow off the top rope. And here you are bringing back this this pure style. Uh, no, man. Um, to be honest, when I started, I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to wrestle. I just loved it. I didn't really have a favorite or anything or a favorite style. I just was mesmerized by it. So I didn't really envision myself doing anything. I just knew I wanted to do it. I didn't know how I was going to do it. Um, but uh, I think the whole pure wrestling is uh, that actually kind of took over my whole mindset. Uh, probably around 2004 and I found Ring of Honor for the first time. Uh, and after that, I was obsessed with like the style and just the presentation of how they performed. So were you, I, I got to bring this up just to get it out because, um, you know, one of my good friends, Alex Shelley, uh, I know you cited him before as like, you know, one of your influences and stuff like that. So uh, a couple of things, how, how has Alex Shelley influenced you? And I don't even know, have you guys ever like wrestled each other and how do you feel like you differ from him? Uh, we, uh, yeah, we've wrestled about three times now. Um, I met him for the first time. I want to say like, 2017 2013 no it was 2015 it was out 2015 yeah at the arena in philly um he came up to me and uh, introduced himself and he started talking about matches that he saw me in and i was just like jaw on the floor uh because I, I thought he was so cool i still do of course uh one of my good friends now but um uh how we differ i think he picked up a lot of like the uh the jave and lucha libre style of wrestling mm -hmm. which i also uh started to enjoy more when I saw it mixed with the uh, X division guys and how like, you know, Saban and Shelly, they moved at the time to me, they moved different than anybody else at the time. So that really influenced me. So around like, you know, when the X division was really big, 2004, 2005 TNA ring of honor, uh, it really influenced my mind and like, it gave me different ideas and uh, it just put me on a path that uh, it was tunnel vision after that for me. So uh, I think we differ in the way that, like, as he was coming up, he was watching and wrestling with the Kudui Daka and, like, wrestling different luchadors in the X Division. Um, but when I was watching that, after he already – I like to think of it as I'm picking up where he left off in my mind. You know what I'm saying? So what I learned from him, I kind of just added other things uh, and other influences to it that I was high on, like the World of Sports stuff, Cabana, Danielson – you know, so I just mixed all of their stuff together and just kind of do my thing now. Uh, the first time that I ever saw you saw you wrestle, I think it was with Cedric. Um, might have been like in like 2015 or 2016. And I mm. thought to myself, this guy's like a student of the game. 
So as far as like where you go back, I mean, do you, you watch a lot of tapes? Do you study a lot of, of different things? And well, when you do go back, um, is there certain uh, promotions that you look at? Uh, for sure. Um, like around the time, I'm not sure what that, it was something about the year from at the time of 2004 to around like 2006 where like I didn't stop watching wrestling at all. And I thought it was like the best wrestling I'd ever seen uh, of any era uh, that I've watched. Um, like the storytelling was on a different level. The rhythm of the matches were, were different than anything I've ever felt. The energy was different. Um, I'm still trying to recreate that in my matches and with people that I'm with, but I haven't done it yet. But um, yeah, I talk about like Tori Mon, um, anything Dragon Gate from 2004 to around, like I said, 2006, same thing with Ring of Honor, same thing with PWG, um, not so much IW and Mid-South around that time. Well, no, yeah, it was about around the same, actually. Um, just all the guys in the Indies were just, they took storytelling to a different level. When I watched like, uh, I think Chi Town struggle with Danielson and Cabana. Like the storytelling, they were using old school psychology, but uh, they just added more to it, more facial expressions, more uh, meaningful little intricate things that they did in the match that came back to aid the storytelling. Like 20 minutes later, like um, I really enjoyed like uh, a lot of Dick Byer stuff in all Japan as well, uh, mostly with. Um, Mil Mascaras, because the, again, the way that they moved was very modern when not a lot of people were moving like that with the transitions and the, and the counters and stuff. So I'm really getting wrapped up in, in those kind of things. All of those styles, I think, give you so much content at one time too. So it's really interesting to watch the guys do that, which seems like muscle memory to me, you know, uh, not so much planned anyway. Hey, Jonathan, this is Dimitri Young. I'm late to the party. I'm a head coach now at high school and I'm actually oh, dealing cool. with a lot of, yeah, I'm dealing with a lot of stuff. So I am now getting familiar with you. So Ring of Honor now comes on on KDOT out here in um, California. So I get to watch that. And then I see that you're the pure heavyweight champion. And um, I saw, and I'm getting to learn more about Ring of Honor and what they do. And I also saw that you um, run the dojo. So you're, you're the head guy. So, um, being the head guy, what does that entail? Because I want to know that from a standpoint of me being a head baseball coach after having a baseball career and how I teach the students. Um, well, it's, it's, it's me just trying to let them know my way of wrestling and my thought process towards it, how I study the matches back on tape. Um, I try not to give them too much of just me. I try to just teach them through seminars that I've been through. So I tell them things that I still go to seminars now whenever, of course, we're able. But uh, whatever I learn and it, it resonates with me and I understand it, I try to just pass it on. So it's just a lot of that really and saying it over and over again, pretty much. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you know what the it is with wrestling. Yeah, do you have some of the students that act like they know more than you because they may have gone somewhere else and, and learned it and then they try and tell you how to do your job? Because I get I get some of that from time to time. <laughs> um, not so much in wrestling. Wrestling is um it's a big uh I uh like respect is a really big thing in wrestling. So like uh if you're in a certain place, um it's kind of just respectful to just like listen, it's asking, but it's not so much uh you know, disrespectful or anything like that. Um, nobody's like, they challenge me in good ways, ask me questions that make me think. It's all, we're all like, we're all in it together. That's what I love about, uh, you know, being in a company for like the, a long period of time, you get a relationship with these guys and we have a mutual respect for each other. So even though I'm the coach, these guys are still like my age, I'm 32. So these guys are like, you know, 27, 28 years old. So we're all grown men just like, trying to help each other navigate through this changing business, this crazy changing business. So we're just sharing ideas and trying to make each other better, really. I just got lucky and got the, the job of coach. <laughs> I, so. I want to go back and piggyback off Lars's question about tapes, because the one thing when we were talking to Jordan Grace and she would mention you is your skill of watching tape and breaking it down and understanding it 
And we do a podcast with two guys that are Major League Baseball All-Stars, a guy that won four Stanley Cups, PD and Lars, and in their industries, watching tape, breaking things down and learning is something they have to do. Who taught you that skill of how to break down tape? Because I feel like it's not something you sit down, you watch, and you automatically understand. And it's probably the guy totally different than who trained you in wrestling. Um. No one taught me that. Like it was always said, everybody, uh, everybody says a study tape, study tape. Um, definitely when like you're you're new in, uh, and I think everybody's passion for whatever they do is different, you know. Uh, and there's so many different avenues you could be passionate about in wrestling. So mine is obviously like in the ring. I overthink a lot. I obviously don't overthink like promos and stuff, which I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to, you know, um, map out the same structure. I would break down matches for promos, but that could be something we talk about later. But uh, no one taught me that. It's just something I developed over time. Um, I came up with a, a couple of guys called the Hooligans. They wrestled in the Midwest for a while. Uh, at the time, an AR Fox and like uh, Hoo Ha Nation came a little bit later, but uh, I think Fox and the Hooligans and myself, we were like, we had the same obsession level when it came to wrestling. Um, and we didn't care what it was. If it was new and we haven't seen it, we'd watch it. And we'd all just like hang out together and just like eat crappy food all night and just watch wrestling until it was over, um, until we fell asleep or whatever. But uh, yeah, I think training with each other and watching wrestling nonstop like that, we would do things like see something like a spot and we just, go and train it the next day and just do it a bunch and just add it to other stuff that we saw last night and two nights ago or three nights before and just keep creating these crazy spots and just keep going over them. Uh, it's just something that like, I don't know, I've just been doing for 15 years, 16 years now. So it's just a part of it. Nobody taught it to me. It's just, we taught each other how to do it really, you know? So I got like, oh. it's a, it's a three part question. All right. And it's, it's relating right. to that. So, it seems like your mind never turns off when it comes to watching wrestling. All right. So do you have mm -hmm. like a, what's your like go to like who, or, or even what promotion or whatever the case may be, what, like you're like, maybe it's Toriumon or, or whatever the case may be. What's your go to, to watch and study wrestling tapes and what's your go to, to watch for, uh, to study like promos. And then what's, what do you watch just to like, Hey man, I want to relax, shut off my brain and just kind of like chill and watch wrestling. If you're able to do that, I know it's hard being in the business and stuff, but you know, those three things. So like you're wrestling promo and then just relaxing. Um, <clears throat> my go-to stuff to watch again, anything from that time frame, uh, whether it's pro wrestling, Noah, <clears throat> not so much all Japan, but pro wrestling, Noah ring of honor, dragon gate. Um, Yeah, PWG, IWA Mid-South. Those were like probably my five main shows that I would just like go back and forth and watch uh, all of the shows, all of the shows. Um, I was really big on like WCW and WWF back in the day, but when I found Ring of Honor, mainstream wrestling like yeah. went out of the door for me. Mm -hmm. It was a whole different animal, man. The wrestling, the selling, um, it seemed, I'm not going to say more realistic, it just seemed more entertaining probably to you right? i mean it was definitely more entertaining but it's the one thing that really hit me was like the obvious like difference in styles there were like distinctive styles represented on the independence and in those companies that made me just i was just like wow like i saw the influence of like you guys using lucha like i think uh i really started getting into it uh the lucha stuff like heavy heavy like training was when TNA was like really big with the X division 2005 and like you guys were just like killing it like all the time and it was always you guys had your signature stuff you knew you knew that but the, the in-between stuff the building to those big spots was always creative and the movement was always so smooth you guys have a, a rhythm and I would always talk about rhythm to my students but that's the stuff I would watch um so uh, I think I left out TNA. So TNA around that time too. Uh, for promos, man, um, 
I was never really into promos. I never really gave any time. I had like the generic deal that I would always say. Um, and I was like uh, doing a lot of spot shows for years. So I never really had to do a lot. So it was easy for me to ignore it, you know? Um, but uh, now that I'm in Ring of Honor and like, uh, I'm noticing that like, oh, okay, if I want to start doing more, I got to start talking. Okay, what do I talk about? And uh, I kind of found my gimmick uh, from watching uh, like just different movies. And I think I watched, uh, what's that, Daredevil. Uh, and I was watching uh, Kingpin talk. And then I was like, yo, that'd be dope if I was like, like an evil underground boss, but how can I do that? Because of course I'm smaller than everybody else. I was like, how can how can I make that like look like I can control these people or like talk a big game and people believe it, you know? Um, so I kind of got my idea off of that. Um, and I already I already had the name the octopus, but uh, it just kind of flowed together after that. But um, the person I study the most right now is the person that's like teaching me, but not really deliberately doing it is Jay Lethal. So um, I mean, he's just so good. I text him every time I see a promo, he's probably tired of it. But every time I see a promo that he's done, and I didn't see it at the at the taping, I'll see it like when it comes out on Twitter. I just mark out for it because it's so, he speaks so normal. I had this issue where if I start trying to talk, I get like this voice that is not mine. <laughs> is it black <laughs> <call> cheese, Mo? <laughs> yeah. No, it's yeah. not. It's more like a, a raspy uh triple h voice is awful like, yeah, yeah i have to always cut it off <laughs> you know um and brother is lingering back there too all the time it's like yeah. nope don't <laughs> say brother you know um so uh yeah just right now is it's lethal and i watch a lot of like <clears throat> just interviews as well whenever i really think about it um just anybody really and what about just to relax like can you ever just shut your mind off and like hey i just want to chill and watch wrestling no, that's not me. All right. It's man. very difficult now. <laughs> I know all the secrets now, most of them. Man. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, so. it's It's got to be a lot like when I started producing records, because I, you know, or I, it just changed the way that I listened to records. I would just be like, oh, that snare sounds like shit. Or, or man, that's mm. a really good bass tone or whatever. And it's just, you kind of think about it in a whole different way. I guess my question to you is now, you know, you mentioned all these promotions, uh, especially the Japanese ones. And it seemed like there was a time I used to tape trade a lot and you had like Torimon, Osaka Pro, all these companies with these TV deals. And here we are yet again, even though we're in a digital age with the, especially here on Fight TV, like you have Ring of Honor, you can watch Impact, you can watch AEW, you can watch New Japan. So when you do watch wrestling today, do you uh, are you are you following along what the other promotions are doing and if so is that influencing you in any way shape or form or is it like inspiring inspiring you or pushing you in a in a, in a, in a way um to be honest I, I don't watch any other companies um like their current product um i have a big issue because i think uh i train myself to do that is uh I remember things and subconsciously they'll just stay in my mind. So if I watch raw today and I watch the entire show, maybe three weeks from now, I'll have this idea that I think is mine, but it was actually Roman Reigns idea. Mm -hmm. So I try not to do that. Um, so I just try to watch as much old stuff as possible. So if I get the idea, it's new again. You know what I mean? If it comes back in my mind, it's new again. I really hate like, thinking I'm doing something that nobody's doing. And then of course, other guys are, are doing it. I'm pretty sure there's people doing it somewhere, but I try to keep my stuff as, uh, as different and obscure as possible, you know? And I want to follow up with that, with, with what's going on in AEW and, and impact with the cross promotions. Do you feel that, that, um, that you guys in ROH are going to, eventually get intertwined in this some way somehow and if so what kind of impact do you think you're gonna land in it <laughs> um i like that laugh by the way <laughs> you got that's that's really cool man i was um really happy to see that happen because i mean we're, we're supposed to be trying to make the fans happy the most you know um and them doing that like the fans are 
or getting a lot of uh, dream matches hopefully soon. Um, but as far as Ring of Honor, I'm not sure. I would really, I would really like to. Um, uh, I can only just keep my fingers crossed and hope so, man. Uh, I don't know anything that's happening, but uh, I haven't heard anything. So I probably won't until it happens. Uh, but um, a match that I would want out of that um, or an impact I would make, I think for the most part, just bringing um, the Ring of Honor style of pure wrestling to like a, a big television audience like that, whether it's with Impact or um, AEW is something that I, I would really enjoy being a part of, you know? So that's pretty much the Impact. I don't really have matches or titles or anything, but that'd be really cool, I think. I have like that typical hokey question I'm going to ask a little bit later about relationships and all that stuff. But you sound like a guy who puts a ton of thought, and this is a question I always ask guys, and sometimes I go, eh, that makes sense. He doesn't really put a lot of thought in his character or, or for vision into where he wants it to go. But you kind of sound like a guy who has this – this this thought process laid out five steps ahead of, of where you want the Jonathan Grisham character to go on television, where and how you want to evolve this character. And A, I guess, is it go to, going according to plan? And B, do you find yourself maybe pigeonholing into this pure style, this pure character, and maybe it'll be hard to break out into a different version of yourself? Um, I, I don't think it would be hard to break out. I already have ideas how it can go. But um, the really funny thing is uh, all this is still really new to me. I've only been in Ring of Honor since 2017. Um, and at the time, I wasn't really doing much but like multi-mans. And I didn't have a story. I didn't have a character. Um, and I was really heavily still doing indies. So in the indies, I could control my story, like what I say, what I do. Um, and if I didn't want to take a book, I didn't have to. But now in Ring of Honor, um, like, it's really, it's a, it's a it's a new experience, a learning experience for me now trying to, like, translate what's in my mind and verbalize it to people so they understand. And I'm just pretty much selling my ideas, you know what I mean? Because um, at this point with Ring of Honor was really cool. I'm not, I've never been to, like, WWE, but we don't have, like, writer writers. So they don't just, like, I guess shove stuff in your face and tell you to do this. So you kind of have to have your own ideas and hope that it makes sense for what the promoter has going forward. Um, and that's really difficult for me because uh, I don't always know communication with uh, booking isn't always great uh, for me anyway. Um, so it's very difficult to like really translate what's in my mind across. Uh, at first it was very difficult, but now I'm learning to roll with the punches a little bit more. And that's the same thing with promos. So, um, but to answer your question, I don't think so. I think the idea I have to come out, whether it's with Ring of Honor or just back on the Indies, I think it could it could go because, to be honest, like pure wrestling is nothing new. It's basically technical wrestling. It's basically what wrestling originally was, but it is uh, it's now a new gimmick with the three rope break rules. But essentially, all it is is bringing focus back to rules. Uh, back in the day, people would get up in arms about somebody punching someone. But now we have no reason, you know what I mean? Uh, because the rules are absent. And when rules are absent, like nobody has anything to get mad about. If we watch football or any kind of uh, professional sport, normally if we're at a bar, there's a guy yelling at a referee about like a bad call or something. But in wrestling, we can't do that because some of us don't know the rules or it's not popular anymore, or I don't know why it's gone, but it's gone now. Nobody really uses them or talks about them. So um, to me, that's a big part of the story. So if I can just keep that and run with that and nobody else is doing it, I mean, I think it translates as well. I want to promote, and it's an argument. People miss what wrestling was, but people enjoy what's happening now. That argument always goes on. So I think that's something that I can play with for a while. I, I love the the pure wrestling rules. They're, it's really easy to follow, but it adds like so much more, I guess, to the match, even though we should have never gotten away from it, but regardless. And then um, speaking of the, the pure championship and in your style and stuff, I, you know, sometimes I, I look at people, people's Wikipedia page. I looked at yours and stuff. And sometimes I'm like, I wonder how much of this is true. 
right? Like I look at, you know, and it makes sense. It shows that it says you cited your influences. It's like Ray Mysterio, Hardy, but like low key Liger, all that Malenko. That makes sense. One name that really popped out and I'm, I'm remembering this cause I see Lars's shirt right now. Um, Bam Bam Bigelow. Uh, really? Like, what, what's he, in, I, he? He's a great worker. Don't get me wrong, but you just yeah, don't yeah. strike me as the type of guy that Bam Bam Bigelow is one of your influences. Why? Why is that? So it's not so much an influence. He's he's the figure that got me into pro wrestling. Um, so I was at my cousin's house, and my cousin would always like power bomb me. I knew what a power bomb was, but I, I didn't watch wrestling. I had to have been like six or seven years old at the time. So he was always kicking my ass, put me in figure fours and stuff. And this one day, uh, he didn't kick my ass because wrestling was on. And so we sat in the living room and I saw Bam Bam Bigelow on television. And at the time I saw him, I think he was leaving and he just looked cool. So I never told anybody. I just started looking for wrestling again. I would try to watch whatever show he was on. And so for a long time, I was just watching for Bam Bam Bigelow. And then it just turned into me watching the whole show. Then it turned into me saying, I'm going to be a wrestler, but not knowing how. So that's pretty much Bam Bam Bigelow was like, who got me into wrestling. That's clear. Well, thanks to my friends over at Two Sweet Merch for giving me the shirt, because ironically, I didn't even know that he was the guy that you saw to get, you know, to get you. So, so we must be on a wavelength or something. Thanks for <laughs> bringing that up. No but, problem. but, um, yeah, you know, I think with your style and what you what you do in the ring, do you feel like it's something that's gonna? Is it not? Is it gonna be one of those things where there's gonna be a whole sort of uh, um, like like a light heavyweight or in a heavyweight? Is there gonna be some sort of system revolved around this old school thought of 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 pro wrestling, pure pro wrestling? Is there gonna be some sort of like uh, tournament, anything like that coming up in Ring of Honor? Is, is, is that, you know, is it going to get, is it going to expand more is what I'm asking? Um, personally, personally, I would love to see a completely pure Ring of Honor. Um, my idea is like music or movies or anything. Uh, I don't know. I, I live in this utopia in my brain, I guess, but uh, I have this idea of where like we all just kind of like kayfabe give a fuck and help each other out so like if everybody kind of picked a lane and they just stuck to it and then like we're going to be this kind of company we're going to be a comic book company we're going to be this pure wrestling company that puts rules over we don't really we have characters but not overly done you know everybody kind of stays in their lane you know it's almost like there's everybody always speaks of these wars and like people trying to, I don't know. It's just like, if we all just do that, everybody always has somewhere to go. Guys have somewhere to aim to. Uh, it just makes it easier to me. Um, but within Ring of Honor, I would love to see a completely pure Ring of Honor. Tag team, heavyweight division, but that's me. Um, wrestling is also supposed to be a variety show, you know? Um, so, uh, you know, to be perfect to me if everybody came to ring of honor for pure wrestling and the company was pure from up top to bottom but you know um that's not how the world is is not how wrestling is so um i don't think it will be but who knows only time will tell really but i know we're going to keep the pure tournament because i mean uh when it came back it was one of the biggest things uh we came back with a huge bang you know so uh i think everyone's happy with it. the fans are happy with the promotions happy with it so well, i think um, people are itching for that kind of wrestling again you know what i mean because i think it is a lot of the wild west out there you know what i mean so yeah you know i'm just it's a it's kind of a, that question was kind of a thank you as well so yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, how, well, oh sorry no uh, all right this one is you know when you get guys that have been up north into the locker room, uh, does that change your, your thought process? Like if you wanted to go up north one day because you had a couple of guys, and I'm not the kind of guy that's like to sit there and gossip, but I know amongst locker room talk, you know, just, you know, keep it to where you're able to tell us bits and pieces and keep us guessing. Because I know when I get new guys in the, in the locker room or, or I go into a new locker room, 
it can either change the morale to good or to bad. And then they could they always talk about their former place where they played at, whether it was a good experience or a bad experience. And and that may influence my future and where I want to go when I play. Um not really. I'm uh I'm a, I, I'm a strange dude. Like I don't really interact with a lot of guys at the shows like I, I I say hey to everybody like I'm friendly but I'm the kind of guy that like I'll talk to a few people and then I'll just pretty much fuck off and you know I don't know go eat something or be on my phone or go to sleep in a corner so when the new guys come in I'm just you know nice to everybody shake their hands I've never really seen any issues I hear things but I've never in all my years of wrestling I've never really experienced like anything like out of the ordinary, like, like me seeing it, you know, of course, like crazy stories, like after the show, but like coming into the locker room, not really. Nah. So I am a ring of honor pure guy, which I kind of don't venture outside the realm of ring of honor. And you sound like a guy Thank that, you. that's you pretty plugged into the whole pure culture in wrestling. Could maybe for me or for the benefit of our fans who might be, you know, interested in the, this whole pure style of wrestling, can you maybe throw us out a, a couple names here that we can go out and watch tape and kind of start to learn more and watch more pure if, if we're really interested in this? Oh, you mean like pure wrestling like right now in Ring of Honor? Yes. Guys, oh. I think we need to be watching right now. Uh, Brian Johnson is one guy. Um, Fred Yeha is another guy. Wheeler Yuta. Um, Cheeseburger is really good at, you know, the pure style of wrestling. Um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of some, uh, he's not at Ring of Honor, but a guy named Lee Moriarty, he's really good too. Um, uh, it's really funny when people ask me to like, give me some names, I'll do like maybe four or five of them, but then I I'd start drawing a blank. And I work with these guys on a regular. <laughs> it's kind of messed up. Well, Pete does the same thing, so it's okay. Yeah, you know, the, my my big thing is that uh, I'll be like, hey, nice to meet you. And you're like, no, no, we work together a bunch. And I know we've met before, so I, I didn't say that to you. I, I remember last time I saw you, we were at, uh, I think it was the ECW arena there. Um, you were in town. I, I don't remember what month it was or whatever. But I saw you. I knew your contract was coming up. I'm like, oh, are we going to get Jonathan on our side? And I don't know. You're with Ring of Honor. But anyways, that's, I'm not <laughs> here to poach or anything like that. Um, but anyways, all these different promotions and stuff like that. I, I want to know. Um, it's COVID time and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Ring of Honor had, you know, a big hiatus, like from, I don't know, what was it? February to August. You guys came back in August. March. Or, it was March to August. March yeah. to August. So it was a good, a good few months there. So what, what precautions are you, is the company taking to make sure that, you know, everybody's staying healthy and all that kind of stuff. Walk me through like a regular day or week or, or whatever it is when it comes to, you know, the COVID okay. precautions. Well, I'm in the bubble now. Uh, I just got here today around 10. Um, no, I got here around noon. Sorry. But um, so uh, I think a couple of days before today's the 13th. So uh, they sent us the test on, on the, on the fifth or something. They sent us a test. We ended up taking it on the eighth. So uh, when they send it, they send it via UPS. Um, and then we have to uh, schedule a time to meet the doctor on the zoom call. Um, there's normally about like, I don't know, six to seven of us on the call, um, not including the doctor um, or the nurse. Um, and so we take the test uh, at home. We have the, the swab one where we have to like stick oh. the swab in our nose and then turn back and hold it for a Ooh. certain amount of seconds. Yeah, it's not pretty. I pretty. hated it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I bled the first time I did it. Mm. Um, so your nose got divergenized. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, that sucked. But um, so that's the first win and uh, that gets sent in. And then um, they let us know if we passed or not. So that allows us if we uh, if we pass and we're clean, we can come into the bubble. Uh, so they fly us into the bubble. But of course, we traveled from the airport to the destination or drove or whatever. So they test us again 
uh, and we have to quarantine so until they, the results come back. Do they do the other, like the, the PCR one where you got to stick it way up or is it a rapid? No, no, this one is just uh, a rapid test. So it's oh. not as far back, but it's, it's in there. Um, and we don't have to do that ourselves. That's done by somebody else on site at the hotel. Um, and so uh, we go back to our rooms. We're not allowed to leave. We can only order from Uber or like, you know, takeouts or whatever. And they bring it to the door, drop it off, pick it up. And then when you guys film, is it like right there in the same building? No, uh, we get, um, so they have this schedule and it's got everybody's like block times on there. So as people are coming, people are, are leaving. They have it down to like a perfect science. It works like, it's like magic around here, man. So it's like guys are coming and then guys are leaving um, all the time. And sometimes it's multiple trips or sometimes I just say, screw it and stay and stay up in the Raptors if I don't want to go back to the hotel room. Um, but we have to stay away from each other. So um, it really sucks because normally we can like talk over our stuff for a while, but now they have it to where we, we meet in the locker room and we have to keep our masks on and this, we get a chance to meet for X amount of time, but our block might be, I don't know, hour and a half, maybe two hours. Okay. So we got to plan, get dressed, stretch and everything, and then do the match however long it is. And uh, hopefully we don't mess anything up, you know, <laughs> because uh, if we run too much time. It runs to somebody else's stuff. So, um, well, I had no idea that's – I mean, I don't want to talk about what Impact does, but uh, I had no idea. That's that's crazy. That's like any yeah. uh, caliber type. Of yeah, yeah. Caliber. They're doing a really good job, man. We appreciate yeah. it, you know. It's pretty yeah. cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, let me ask my – I guess I would call it the TMZ kind of question here, which I, I didn't ask Jordan because I figured it would be more interesting coming from you. Oh. You you are in a relationship with a female wrestler in a different company, yes. Yes. and before COVID, especially with indie shows in the traveling, and everybody knows how hard it is to maintain a relationship when you see each other five days a week to begin with, but the way the wrestling industry is, is, is and the way you guys are, I, I don't know how much actual time you guys get together, but as professional wrestlers in relationships from different companies, how hard is it to schedule time together? How hard is it to not be two ships passing in the night? It, it, it's got to be something that you guys have to work extra hard on just to see each other. Um, not really. Uh, the way our life has just went, so far it's been kind of a blessing um for a while there um we were two ships like passing in the night she'd come back from impact um and then i'd be leaving a day or two later for ring of honor and then when i come back she's going to japan for like three weeks that's happened you know where i've gone to england for like a week and she's come back and we just keep missing each other but then um <laughs> i don't know one day the light bulb just turned on and we were like, we travel so much, we can just probably start taking a lot of the same dates in the same country, maybe. And then all of a sudden we started, you know, tacking on like trips where we went, we went to like Italy one time off of the back of a progress show or on the front of a progress show, just had a vacation and then did the shows and then came back home. So um, once we like just figured out, cause it's kind of new for both of us, uh, I just got, like I said, I got signed in 2017 to Ring of Honor. So with, along with my like heavy independent schedule, I added the Ring of Honor schedule. So, uh, and then she was heavy on the indies and then she got signed to TNA. So then we were just passing each other a lot. So um, uh, it's a blessing just what we've been able to do and the places we've been able to see because of it. So it actually made it better. Um, unfortunately now, <laughs> We see each other all the time, so it's a little different now. <laughs> uh, yeah, because like I mean, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, because it's just like we've done everything now. I feel like we we do a lot of, uh, of course, we still work out together all the time, but like because of COVID, it's just like there's nothing to do, and now we just. 
we have this really bad problem with fast food. And it's just, it's really made things bad. That's what I mean. Um, but when we're on the move, we don't have that issue. But now that we're, you know, in the pandemic, it's like, oof, I don't know what happens. We have like really good weeks of uh, like working out and stuff. And then all of a sudden this, this pizza trail of boxes in the house, man. It's awesome. <laughs> well, I always see you guys' videos of you guys like working out and stuff like that. Why aren't you guys sending the videos where it's the pizza boxes? Because that's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand the amount. That's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I do. Hey, we're, we're pro wrestlers, man. I mean, we, we've, we've thrown down a few hundred boxes of pizza. But hey, hey, uh, hey, that, hey, that goes to baseball, every sport, too, in, the, in the minor leagues, boy. Hey, hey, even the big leagues, too. Nothing beats a good old-fashioned couple of boxes of pizza. Hey, there was there was a point in my life where I was living in a hotel, and I'd order pizza, and then I'd have pizza shame afterwards, and I would try to hide the box. And <laughs> you know what I mean? I would, like, leave pizza it shame. The floor, you know That's what I mean? Up. Knowing that, like, a couple pieces outside of the door of my room, I'd like be one o'clock in the morning, be like, I'm hungry. And I know that I got pizza outside my room and I go after it again and then I got more shame. So I've been there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me at least like once a week, man, every month. Once a week, every month. PD asked you what you watch when you wind down earlier and it got me to thinking of what do you do to wind down? I mean, look, you're a jacked guy. We just heard the pizza box story, but you're a jack guy. You, it sounds like you live wrestling twenty four seven. Do you have a a guilty pleasure? Are you like a ninety day fiance guy or a love after lockdown or Kardashians or something? Yeah. What, what is your guilty pleasure when you have to unplug from the wrestling business? Are you a gamer? What What does Jonathan Grisham do to just I guess separate himself from the industry to find out who he is. Um, I got a lot of animals. I got two cats and I got two dogs. Uh, I have a little teacup Yorkie named Bernie. Uh, I spend a lot of time with her, um, go on walks and stuff. But outside of that, I am a gamer. Um, I, I listen to a lot of music. I like, uh, I have this thing where like, I don't really have like bands I listen to. I just like pick a genre and I just like kind of zone out and like relax and stretch to that. Um, like during the pandemic, it's like not a lot of stuff I can do, but when, when, you know, like things were more open, I don't know, I would go like bowling. I really like bowling. I'm really good at it. After like first couple of rows, I get really good. So I really enjoy that. Um, uh, as far as like career wise, there's nothing else, man. Like I was playing a little guitar for a while. I try to learn Japanese and I pick it up and I put it down. Um, but for the most part, man, just like bowling, playing with my puppies. And, and sometimes I play the game, but what's your go-to game? Uh, man, unfortunately it's this game called arc survival evolved. Um, I don't know. It's just got me spending hours on it. Definitely in the bubbles. So I've been playing that one so far on PS4. All right. I'm a Call of Duty guy. I've done a few tours in Verdun, so I know what it's like out there in the mess. Thank, thank you for your service, Dennis. You're, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys are out pumping iron and wrestling. I am protecting the free world one video game at a time. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out there and I'm going to save the world only the way I can. Okay, kids? Okay. You might be saving the world. I'm 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 hiding pizza boxes. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you guys are talking about that. All I could think of is that, you know, Jonathan said, Oh, I, I got pets and stuff like that. Have you ever had a a pet like octopus or anything like that? Where <laughs> my, my question is, wh where did that come from? How maybe I don't know the story behind it, but where where did that come from? How did you come up with that? Um, uh, unfortunately it's not like a really like cool story. Uh my buddy and I, uh, Chris Brooks, it was during the time where I was living in, I was living in Europe from uh, probably 2000, 2011 to 2013, I was like living in Europe. I was living in France actually. Um, and uh, at the time I started going over to England um, to do independent shows. And I met this guy named Chris Brooks. 
and uh, he lives in Wolverhampton, England. And uh, there was a show there called Fight Club Pro. I forget how I got hooked up with it, but um, we really enjoyed like you know old wrestling. So we were watching like a lot of old wrestling. One of our favorite guys was Antonio Anoki, and uh, we both, after time, adopted the uh, octopus stretch. And uh, we just wrestled on shows together, hung out all the time, watched movies and stuff. And eventually we decided to tag. Um, and we were just sitting in his living room one day trying to come up with tag names. And um, somehow it came across to uh, Calamari Catch Kings. And uh, because nothing octopus, something sounded cool. So yeah. we became uh, a team called CCK. And so we started just touring around uh, the UK and then, you know, was blessed enough to start taking the act to Germany. And then... Um, I don't know, a little bit after that, I started to come back to the States because um, I wanted to try to get a job, man. So um, I came back to the States and I was still using the Octopus logo on my gear and stuff. So, uh, or the Squid logo on my gear. So I was like, okay, I can't call myself Calamari guy. So I was like, I guess I'll just like, you know, go with the Octopus. That sounds cooler. So that was pretty much it, man. And it kind of like, um, I was rolling at this one jujitsu gym and a couple of the guys had like, octopus geese on and um i always thought that was cool so uh i ended up just wanting to go with that because i had the backstory about grappling and stuff like that so that's how it pretty much came to be my name you, you nothing talk- cool about that <laughs> oh, i think it's sweet i i mean it doesn't always need to be a good story the, the, the thing- oh that came that yeah, was that, different that, that was an evolution yeah oh i thought you were just talking about the name no, well, and, well, that and the, like how it all came together. So you just put on, I'm, I'm assuming it's from the name and then you're just like, hey, this looks sweet and you put it on. Right. So that was like I yeah. mentioned earlier about like wanting to be like uh, like an underground boss. And then I was like, yo, but like the, the weird thing is, is like, <clears throat> and I think that's why I love pro wrestling is like I have an idea. I had the idea when I was leaving the UK and leaving like European wrestling and saying I was coming back to like the American Indies. Um, I had the idea. I tried it out <clears throat> when I went to Mexico, but the Mexico guys that made the gear didn't make the mask the way I wanted it. It was more Lucha Libre-esque, but I wanted something more realistic, you know? Um, so I kept drawing it, kept sketching it. And uh, one day, I think, forget how later it was, but I end up thinking to myself, wait, Drago, that guy's got awesome gear. And it's like realistic looking. I need to go find the guy that made his gear. Yeah. So I started asking around. And I ended up finding the guy that made his stuff. And I gave him the drawing. And like, I think a couple of weeks later, he sent me some pictures. And it was exactly the way I had drawn it. And uh, that's pretty much it. I had the vision in my head since 2015. I just couldn't find anybody to, to make it. It's just the timing kind of just like it was perfect timing for the character and then, like, for everything happening around the bar, everybody leaving, pure title coming back, it was just perfect storm. You know? I think so. you and Jay should be called the Calamari Catch Kings. I like that. That's a, that's a sweet name. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, took a while, though. It took a while to come up with that. It's cool. I know we have to wrap this up here, and we probably got time for a question from each of us, and I'm going to knock mine out now. You talk about all the places overseas you've wrestled, and I guess one of my obsessions is, what does the foreign fan base think of American fans? Because I listen, let's guys, if you're watching at home, let's be honest with ourselves. We're a bit of a hillbillies when it comes to the way we're portrayed on TV with hijacking shows in our channel. Do I look like a hillbilly? <laughs> yes, you do. yes. I yes. was waiting for that. <laughs> but but in the sense of uh, the uh, American fan base, when they go to a wrestling show, kind of like to hijack a show, they sometimes want to be the center of attention. But what do the, you know wrestling fans around the world think of us Americans as wrestling fans? Do they ever come up to you and be like, "Oh, I'm sorry, you got to wrestle in in America, especially Florida. That's a butthole place." But you know. What 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 do they say about us? I've never really <clears throat> I've never really heard anything from fans um, in other countries um, about American fans. If anything, I think, for example, I want to say, and maybe I'm wrong, but I want to say Japanese fans kind of start adopting 
the way we react to to wrestling. You know, I don't know. I don't know where that <clears throat> independent, this is awesome, and or maybe it just kind of all happened at the same time. I don't know, but like everybody likes to do that. You know what I mean? So I haven't really heard anybody like talk down on, you know, Americans as far as like wrestling goes. Uh, the stereotype that I was told in France when I first got there was uh, Homer Simpson. Americans are viewed as Homer Simpson sitting on a couch with a beer in his hand and a burger in the other hand. Like that's their idea. Of us. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, France's best defense in World War II was a supply of German flags, so fuck them. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's like the, the most famous words of, uh, the French have ever said, I quit. So anyways, <laughs> don't even go there. Watch the <laughs> France, by the way, we really appreciate yes. the download. All your stuff. Like, <laughs> wee wee. <laughs> whatever i love friends <laughs> well my last question is the same last question i actually asked your wife okay so let's just get serious okay because you're a thinking man's wrestler you're a technical genius you and your wife in a cage what's the finish and who's going over she's going over because i'll never hear the end of it and <laughs> what's the finish finish i gotta let it go over with the roll up Oh, roll up. I thought for roll sure. Roll up. I really want I'm a big leaguer. Strong. You know, I'm a big leaguer. I will <laughs> say, uh, you know, but she put you over though, right? She said that it would be like a melee and then you'd climb out of the cage. Yeah. So oh. Basically, she said that you were scared of her. <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's true. Have you seen it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man. All right. Well, I'm going to ask the same question <clears throat> I pretty much ask every guest since, uh, you know, Lars did. So, you knew the, the the pro wrestling or I'm sorry, the pure wrestling championship was coming back. All right. Did you know ahead of time uh, that you were going to win the belt or did they just come in that day and were like, Hey man, we're putting you over in this thing. Or was it kind of set up for you, you know, you to win? Like how did that all come about? To be honest, I don't know. Um, did you know? I didn't know. Or? I found out I was winning it. Like I think, uh, the day before um, I was told on a call. Um, but uh, I don't know, like since I got to Ring of Honor, <clears throat> I was always like putting over whenever, whoever would listen, whether it was Todd Sinclair or one of the boys, I would always talk about how pure wrestling would like differentiate the company mm -hmm. from everyone else. It just give us something that like, you know, is ours and that nobody else could do or nobody else would be doing. And uh, I just kept preaching that. Um, somebody in the office said I spoke it into existence, um, not just for myself, but just, just to have like a variety show. I don't know. Just that's what wrestling is supposed to be. So, um, you know, uh, but no, I didn't know. And I don't know if it was set up for me. I, I, I don't know. I, I play with this idea because I'm always negative with myself with things is that like, I think I was the last resort, like the last choice. Cause you got to think about the names that were in the tournament before. Um, I like to think there was no way I was going to have it. Just like COVID kind of happened, you know. <laughs> I couldn't think of like when they when they were talking about bringing back the the title. I was like, well, that's that's got to go to you. Like, I mean, you're just you're so like smooth in the ring, and that just when when I think that that pure championship, it, it like screams your name, like the the one person on the roster. That that's just my opinion. I don't know if everybody agrees with that, but I was like, yeah, that that's actually. I, I'm glad they put it on you and weren't like you know the you know, you weren't chasing the belt or whatever the case, like, I think utilizing you and you've heard the expression before, like sometimes the title, you know, elevates the person. Sometimes the person elevates the title. I think in your case, you know, you're elevating the title. I don't think the title is elevating you in that sense. So I think they, they had no choice, but to put it on you. And then that way, you know, you can make it what it's supposed to be and what it was. And then, you know, it's going to lead to a bunch of feuds. It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Anyways, that wasn't really a question. That was just me saying that. Oh, that's cool. No, that's a different view of it. Um, yeah. I'm just, I'm just negative with myself. I just do that. I don't know why. Ah, stop, man. Stop. Yeah, yeah stop it. <laughs> Dimitri? Uh, all right. I'm a copycat, too, because we all have our one key question. And for me, it seems like you're more of a guy that plans ahead. So what does it look like? From you being 32, I'm 47. 
what is your 15 year plan look like? Is it going up north or is it you just play it by ear? Um, you know, uh, I've been blessed, man. Like, uh, like I, I made a goal for myself in 2005 and I said, you know, I want to wrestle for Ring of Honor. And I just never thought about anything else. I just kept doing that. And now I'm here. I don't know, man. Like, um, I don't know. The one thing I know I do want to do is uh, I want to still be in the wrestling business. I still want to uh, hopefully be coaching, you know, um, if I learn more as far as like, uh, you know, agenting and helping things like that, I'm always like willing to like sit back and listen to stuff like that. So if I can learn all that, I always want to learn as much as I can about the business. So I'm always in it. I never want to have to leave it, you know, unless I want to. Um, so uh, next 15 years somewhere in wrestling, uh, helping helping the company, helping the business of wrestling. You gonna get that Ring of Honor championship? Is that in the cards in that 15 years? Uh, if you, you give got me another the, 15 you years, the, I freaking hope so, another 15 okay, years. Okay, because you got the tag team and you have the peer. Did you have the six man as well? Or you gotta no, get that too no, from no. Shane Taylor and crew? Right, on. I don't wanna wrestle Shane though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get knocked out. <laughs> Where can people find you online? Do you have a pro wrestling tea store? Anything like that? I do. I don't really mess around with pro wrestling tees because uh, I'm I'm just lazy, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But I got Twitter, um, at the John Gresham. And um, Instagram is just me posting cat pictures. I mean, cat and dog pictures. Uh, so you might not want to follow me there. But that is just Jonathan Gresham. Um, that's on Instagram, and uh, that's pretty much all my social medias. Wow! And, uh, obviously, on Ring of Honor yeah, yeah. every week. So, okay. Especially oh, yeah. tonight, leading us in on Monday nights. For everybody at home, the show's over for us. We'll probably uh, giggle and talk like a little schoolgirls off the air, which that's my favorite part of the show. But listen, you're watching on Fight. Don't forget to head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe. If you missed any of the show, you can watch it there. Uh, WP underscore pod on Twitter, Wrestling Perspective Pod on Instagram. Go follow us over there. Make sure you get everything we're doing. Lars, where can people find you online? Uh, Lars Fredrickson on Instagram, Blue Checkmark, uh, Twitter, Roots Radicals 01. Um, and right here on Fight TV, PD. Uh, Fight TV, I, PD Williams on Twitter and Instagram. Dimitri? It's well, the uh, base page still. Ah, uh, you're funny. I still have a page or two, but I'm at the meet, the meet hug with the blue dot uh Instagram. You can catch them at Denny's every Sunday morning. Beep them if you have any questions for them. Uh, you so funny, Dennis. Shave that beard, it'll make you look better. Oh, thanks, baby. And and a special thanks to Jonathan for uh putting up with us. Thank you yes. so much. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me.